independent music. The triangle of musicians, fans and music professionals. This is Tim from the Indie Bands blog and welcome once again. Who's on today? Let's go find out. Indie Music Tips number 17, talking about promotion with Corey Kayla of Music Goat. Hi, Corey. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. Thanks for sparing me the time. Do appreciate it. And promotion, that's a, that's a fairly broad-ranging topic. But uh, one thing that would be quite interesting to talk about, which really does sit in with one of my bugbears, which is having your own uh, internet website, uh, email marketing. How does that work and what's the advantages of that? Well, like, you know, like, kind of like we were saying, um, we talked about before the show, just we both agreed that, you know, it's extremely important to have your own website. I mean, it's great. I mean, you got to think of your website as kind of like the hub. I mean, sure, you can go on Facebook and MySpace and, you know, fill in the blank, social network, Twitter, whatever. Yeah. But I think everything needs to funnel back, you know, to your website. Um, there's, there was a lot of horror stories from, you know, the early 2000s, like when MySpace kind of went downhill. You know, all those people spent all their time collecting all those people, you know, to yeah. be fans. And then what happened? MySpace is no more. There's nobody there yeah. anymore. So it was like just a big waste of time. But if you would have had an email list, you have those people forever, you know. So, um, so yeah. So that's that's when I started thinking about it. Um, I had a bad experience on another um, website that I was doing. I wasn't collecting emails. And I had, you know, and I just had a sinking feeling after a while that I, I missed a huge opportunity, you know, and so I've kind of been kind of a prophet, I guess, of email for, for, for yeah. since. Now, like, now I'm all hardcore about it because it is, it's true. I mean, that's the most important thing you want to do. Wherever you uh, have your music, you want to make sure that there's a way that brings them back to uh, a landing page or um, a website, which is specifically trying to get them onto an email and you know, and then that way you can contact them, you know, anytime, you know, and you can start sure. building a relationship with them, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just really important, I think. The advantage of, a, of an email marketing uh, list is, is in some ways quite evident to, to someone like yourself who's been in the uh, internet marketing business for a long time. But it's not necessarily evident to everybody. Okay, so I've got an email address and what do I do with it? Well, what you do is, um, and there's, 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 there's a couple different ways to kind of approach this, and all kind of depends on, you know, A, what you think your audience would like or what they're comfortable with and, you know, like how you want to brand yourself. Um, so what I do is I'll get the email address, and I, I usually offer like a couple tracks, you know, for free, and then I just shoot them right over to them in their email. And then what I'll have is I'll have, I kind of have like an autoresponder series set up. So just kind of automatically you're kind of building a rep, you know, uh, you're just building a relationship with them. You know, sure. every couple of weeks I'll send them out a track, tell them a little story about it, or I'll send them a video. But what this does is this kind of like, it's kind of like an autopilot thing going on where you're kind of sending traffic to your songs, you're sending traffic to your videos, like however you want to kind of like aim your fire hose, I guess would be, yeah. you know, but that's the beauty of, you know, of the, of the internet marketing. Plus, Anytime you have something new to release, they're there. You have them. I mean, you can't just you can't depend on iTunes. You can't depend on Spotify. You can't depend on all these places. You know, when you have new stuff, they're not going to promote you unless you know you're like with Sony Universal and they're you know yeah absolutely. <laughs> you know, you're one of the big labels. That's when they're going to promote you. They're not going to care about a little indie guy you know in you know Minnesota or the UK or whatever. But, yeah. You know, yeah, but, uh, that's that's quite interesting as well because that sort of leads on to, to something else when it comes to the promotion side is it, it, everyone sort of puts their music on iTunes and and lots of people stop at that point but uh, you've you've got a slightly broader perspective that actually you should really get your stuff out on as many if not every platform. Yeah, you you know I my thinking is it's like you know I don't know where my you know where my potential fans are you know and. And a lot of times, and I just did this like in the last year or so, I made sure that like on my music page, and I, and I don't do this, I have a couple different music pages, that's kind of another story, but uh, on one of my pages that I share with people a lot, I have an iTunes link, I have an Amazon link, I have a Spotify link, YouTube, um, 
Bandcamp. I mean, Bandcamp is the one that I probably want them to go to. You know, as, as a as yeah. a musician, I want them to go to that one because you know, obviously, I'm going to make the most profit off of that, and um, you know, and I'm going to get their email and that kind of thing. But um, but you know what? I don't want to force anybody to go somewhere where they're not. You know, I mean, I'm not going to like you know, if if some guy likes to hang out on Spotify or he likes to hang out on iTunes, if that's his thing, then you know what? I'm more than happy to accommodate him. You know, I mean, it's it. it Ultimately, it is about the fan and making them, um, you know, you don't want to make it difficult for people to get your stuff. You don't want to make it difficult for anybody, you know. I mean, so so my thing is to be available everywhere, you know. And granted, yeah, sure, sure, I'm not going to get paid as much over on Spotify as I would if somebody comes and, and, and gives me, like, you know, a couple bucks for a name your price on my band camp. Yeah. But, you know, you got to think of other stuff i mean at least they're listening to you on spotify um you're gonna show up in their playlist over there you're gonna probably show up to the on their friends play, playlist i mean you know streaming's a whole nother conversation but um but really it's just anywhere they want to listen to your music i'm happy to be there for them you know and it's like mainly i want them on the email you know list but Hey, you know, you got to get them any way you can, and it's uh, yeah, uh, abs- absolutely. Uh, obviously, <coughs> one, of, one of the other advantages of, of Bandcamp is that you do pick up their email address, uh, which it's a conundrum when you start getting onto other platforms, and, and maybe there isn't an answer. But are there any ways of, of generating feedback and direct feedback? That you've experienced, because I, I didn't mention. In addition to, to running music, uh, you also have your own own band as well. Um, th- that you can generate feedback and responses to what you're doing. Obviously, on iTunes, there's a people can make a comment if they want to, but you're still it's still in the dark. Or is it just you have to accept that's the way it is? No, you know, I just did something a couple of weeks ago. I got a new album that I'm gonna have. I have it coming out pretty soon. And um, I released a lot, you know, every song I released as a single last year, um, every month. So I would say a a nice chunk of my email subscribers already have had a chance to hear the tune or have bought it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But now it's time, you know, I'm going to release it as an album because people still want to have the album. And, you know, it's just it's another point of exposure, I guess, for my music. You know, a lot of people didn't hear those songs. And so, well, we're just going to throw them on an album and then we'll re re put them out there. But one of the things I did is I wanted to make it a little more unique and I kind of want to involve like, you know, the fans. So what I did is I, um, I just threw out a question out there a couple of weeks ago. I was like, I had this concept about, um, something I wanted to do with the album, you know, so it wasn't just the songs, you know, I wanted to yeah. add some, something special to it, you know, whatever, just to kind of be a little different and, and give the people that already do have the track a reason to, or the, all the tracks, a reason to, to pick up the album as well. So what I did is I just, Asked them, <laughs> you know. I just whipped up an email. <laughs> that's a dangerous thing to do. Fancy that. Fancy actually asking your fans what they like. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I said. I'm like, hey, you, um, you know. And I've got hundreds and hundreds of people on my web, on my, on my email address. So I mean, it, yeah. I, it, I spent the whole morning, you know, replying to everybody and thanking them for their input. You know, I mean, there's a lot of different ways you could do that, but yeah. But I'll tell you what. I mean, it really gave me a perspective. It really helped me to get to know what people on my list like. You know, they. I, some of them, you know, it turns out that um, half of them thought it was not a very good idea and half of them thought it was a good idea. So what that did is it, it kind of made me look, you know what, maybe I can accommodate both, you know, and it kind of yeah. kind of turned it into a, it, it's possible I could generate more income because of it, because of the ideas that some of them were throwing out. And um, so, I mean, just, yeah, just another reason to uh, jump on the email marketing train, you know. That, that's an interesting uh, follow-on to what will be the um, appearing on the on the website tomorrow? And tomorrow, uh, when we're recording this, is the twenty uh, fifth of June. Uh, is an interview that I did with David Wimble, and he was talking exactly about that point: is about evolving through feedback. And I guess that that by having the email marketing list, you're actually in a position to to directly communicate with your fans to get that feedback that, that that helps you decide what to do next and where to go next yeah you know and and it, and it all starts too with um one of the things like when when you would sign up for my email list for instance um the first thing i do is i just send like a welcome email it's got like a it's got like a zip file and, and there's a bunch of different ways you can send your free downloads i mean mm. ultimate unlimited ways i'm sure everybody's got their own style but 
I just send them a zip file with the actual MP3s in it. I welcome them. But then what I do is like about a day later, um, I'll send them an email just personal, like from my personal account. I'll just say, hey, you know, thanks for thanks for getting on my mailing list. You know, um, I really appreciate it. I hope you're liking this the music. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you know, I'm right here. Just uh, hit reply, and um, you know, and I'll tell you what, um, not everybody replies back to me. But I would say a good quarter, you know, 25% probably do. And it's interesting because you learn where they're from. You learn yeah. where they're at. What other what other artists are they listening to? You know what I mean? That's a big thing. Um, you can always, mar- you know, I found out a lot of bands that, like, they're like, oh, you're just like so-and-so. Or I listen to a lot of this. So now you, that kind of opens up, like, a whole new marketing um uh, frontier for you, I guess, would be the. It, it probably also helps uh, again with something else that that we've covered in the series, which is is putting tours together. It might give you some ideas as some bands to connect and say, "Hey, look, we've got a similar kind of fan yep. base. Why don't we do something together?" Yeah, no, that's true. Um, I, I'm always looking for stuff like that uh, myself. It's it's, it's tricky sometimes. Um, you know, it's good to keep your eye out for it. I haven't had a lot of success myself, just maybe because I haven't found the right people, because, you know, yeah. everybody has the same philosophy I do. You know, it's like, hey, you want to swap email, you know, things, because, hey, I want to make sure that I like, that the music, that their music, I think, is like something that I actually like. You know, I don't want to just throw something out there just to try to, you know, I don't know, I just, it just would, wouldn't feel very authentic, and I no. don't want to just push some stuff just because I want it on some other dude's email address but and then too I want them to kind of be dedicated um, or at least have the same philosophy and marketing kind of um, well, marketing philosophy that I do just because you know I don't want us to both be wasting our time you know like if I'm doing something different but anyway but yeah that's that's a great I mean like I said it just same way about distributing music um, think about it the same way with promotion just try a, put your foot in every you know dip your toe in to every little <laughs> marketing pond out there just to see what works. You know, what if it works, you know, throw it in the hopper and keep doing it, you know, but always be trying new stuff, you know. You never know. That moves on to, to something that's a little bit more um, IT geeky, perhaps, uh, but it's something that I'm hoping to get uh, a specialist in um, later on in the series, uh, which is pay-per-click advertising. Um, I do know from from our uh, pre-chat it's something that you have had a had a go with, um, and I've spoken to one or two bands that that have done it. I've also spoken to a number of internet specialists who specialise in it, who are terrified of the idea of the music industry. So it's quite good to be speaking to a musician who's actually tried a bit of pay-per-click and. Uh, Perhaps you can give some some feedback on on what that's all about, because even the term pay per click advertising may not mean something to anybody. Uh, but in essence, it's, it's if you if you go and look on on uh, on a website, you'll often see uh, an ads by Google uh, ad. That's a, an advert that's paid for by uh, the consumer. Uh, sorry, the 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 marketer at the end, and they're paying a cost per every time somebody clicks that advert and it it varies depending upon what's called a keyword that you're using and Facebook does something very similar as well it's not the promoted posts section but it's the the other section which is uh, I forget what Facebook call that maybe maybe you can can advance on that because that's something that you have done is tried the Facebook version of that I'm not sure I just know it's just they just have an advertise I don't know if they actually have a yeah yeah probably it's just called Facebook advertise yeah but um, but yeah, I mean, it's some other stuff. I mean, just some other ideas of some pay-per-click ideas. I mean, you 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 know, you pointed out Google, um, Bing, and Yahoo have them, and, and a lot of times some of those are like cheaper than the than the Google. I know a, I know a jazz saxophone player <laughs> that I know, um, uh, Charlie. I forgot his last name now, but he kills it over on Bing. I mean, the ads are like way more inexpensive, and he's got a really good converting landing page, and he gets like, you know, ten cents a click. You know, he's been doing stuff, and he gets a nice little fan base built out of that. But he's in a really niche kind of a kind of a music. You know, it's not yep. necessarily a popular music; it's just a jazz. So he can really fine tune his his advertising. But um, but there's a, there's so many places out there to do pay per click. Um, I, I think that, that it, what you what you I think what you said there is 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 very important because one of the the aspects that that perhaps put pe- put does put people off the idea of pay per click advertising is oh my god, I'm going to spend a fortune here yeah if you, if you want to, to put something like 
indie band as your title. That's going to be a very competitive yeah. keyword, and, and the advertiser's going to say, well, you're going to have to pay a lot of money for that word. But if you've got something very much more specific that really is about your music, one, the people that click on it are going to relate to it, which means there's more chance of people purchasing, because that's the idea of the pay-per-click advertising, is to get to buy what you're trying to sell. Um, but equally, because it's a more specific and niche keyword, uh, it's going to cost you less to, to, to have that. Yeah, you know, a, a good example of, it may be, just, this is just off the top of my head, but um, a good example would be, you know, say you're, you're like an indie punk band. You know, I mean, look at some of the, you know, the bigger punk bands, and maybe even better, maybe some of the punk bands that are kind of under the radar that not a lot of people know, but they have a pretty strong fan base kind of a, I mean, that would be something that you might want to bid on. You know, like, hey, hey fans of, uh, you know, Black Flag, you know, you'll love, yep. you'll love us if, you know, check us out or whatever. You know, I mean, you could, you can just specifically target all your ads right to those people because, I mean, they're going to be more likely to like your stuff if you kind of fall into that, that niche, you know. So, mm. um, and, and yeah, you can get your cheaper clicks. And the, and the whole thing I sh- we should probably, you know, throw out there is like, you know, pay per click isn't for like the faint of heart. I mean, you're gonna really want to know that you know you are gonna convert people into customers at some point down the line, like that you have something for sale or, you know, because it's gonna cost you some money. You know, it's gonna cost yeah. you money both to do it. You know, first it's gonna you should go out and get yourself like a good course. You know, on um on pay per click, which there's a million of them out there. <laughs> you know, like a yeah. a, a shoe money comes to mind. I I think he's a good um beginner kind of a guy to learn from. But um but yeah, you want to learn how to do it first of all. So you're gonna want to invest a couple bucks in just learning about it. And then after that, you know, it's it's gonna cost you money to get rolling and to figure stuff out. But you know, if you are willing to invest some money, you know, eventually you could be killing it. You know, I mean if you really kind of tighten everything up and you find like the right the niche or the right people to add, you know, add to and you get your ads all, I mean, you, you can really, you can do some damage, you know, I wouldn't say I'm there yet, but. I, mean, yeah. I think it's quite interesting from the, from the perspective of Facebook. I know people slam Facebook a lot and, I, and I'm, I'm uh, along with everyone else on it from time to time. <coughs> but one of the very good things about Facebook uh, pay-per-click is you can really target your audience. Yeah. And going back to the, to where we started off from, which is getting to know your fans through your email marketing base, you'll know who they are, what kind of music they like, probably their rough age, you'll know their sex, you can target all of those things on a pay-per-click advert in uh, in Facebook, which means that you're targeting the people that really do like your music, in theory. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, you know, this this brings up an interesting thing. I did a post a couple of weeks ago that I learned from a friend of mine, um, John Ojaka, Music Marketing Manifesto. You guys might like him. I'll throw a plug out there for him. He's a good guy. Promote his product or whatever. But he had this idea um, a couple months ago where they – Facebook started offering this um, feature in their in their advertising area, the pay per click, and what it does is it's like it's called the lookalike audience, mm-hmm. and what you can do is if you have an email list, you know, obviously these email list people are you know they're your fans, they're gonna like your stuff. Well, what you can do is you can export you know their emails and then import them into Facebook, and Facebook will build a profile based on everybody that's in the fa- in in the Facebook. You know, whoever's got a Facebook profile, they build a profile just specific to the email addresses that you put into the that you put into the advertising system or whatever right. you call it. So you can actually automate that process itself, so you yeah. can get a targeted uh, base. That's great. Yeah, I'm actually we're, I'm actually playing around with that right now, and it, it's it's interesting. I, I took all the people that because what I do is I kind of filter out my email address or my email list. Like I'll have mm. a there's kind of a couple different tiers. You know, there's all the people that just got on there, and they're you know they're getting my free tracks, and they're getting all my autoresponders and, and anything else that I kind of send to them. But then I have like another le- level. I just they're kind of like my VIPs. You know, I don't yeah. call them that, but they're they're the people that buy stuff from me either once or on a regular basis, and I kind of have them segmented. And what I did is I took them and I just made the profile in the Facebook. You know, they made a profile just based on those people. So I was able to take the people that are most likely to yep. buy my stuff, or they did buy my stuff, and then Facebook took all those and then just built the profile, like, okay, this is what that person looks like, and then now I use that to to make pay-per-click ads. 
Yeah. Well, I'm advertising to the people that are most likely to buy my music. You know, if I didn't have an email address, I mean, or an email list, I guess that wouldn't even, you know, I, I wouldn't even be able to do that. But no, now, no. now you can. I mean, so, you know, just something to think about. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we pursued uh, pay-per-click and, and, and appreciate that. And, and thanks for, for the ideas that you've thrown out there because they are all really, really important. Now, what about uh, Corey... Corey Kayla, and and I'm glad when I looked on your website, it told me the correct way to pronounce your surname because yeah. I'm sure I pronounce it the way that everyone else would do on reading, which is oh, Kurna. Yeah. But anyway, it's Corey Kayla and Music Goat. What's what's Music Goat when it's at home? Um, what is Music Goat when I'm sorry? What's that like? I, what's Music Goat all about? Oh, what's it all about? Oh, okay. Or, sorry, maybe yeah. Just... These English, these English <laughs> uh, phrases. <laughs> yeah. It was like a, it was like a oh, boot, you know, and I was like, eh, that's all right. Um, no, really, I just, uh, it's kind of morphed over the years. I started out, um, before I was a musician, I just kind of was, I was just a music fan, and I just did reviews, I did podcasts, and I just talked about music, you know, and um, I just noticed over the years, for whatever reason, I just started getting a lot of, uh, I just started chit-chatting back and forth with other artists that, you know, like that maybe that I was reviewing or that wanted me to, put their stuff on there. And then eventually it's just like, you know what, I'm just going to kind of turn this into a kind of more of a forum where I could just, you know, like, here's what I'm doing to promote my own music. And then once I started throwing a few posts out there, you know, people were really receptive to some of them. So I just kept on posting them. And then I started getting some guest posters, you know, like I was telling you this morning about the lawyer that came on there and did like a piece on copyright law. And, you know, it's just kind of, it's kind of interesting. It's just more of like a place where, you know, just I just wanted to hang out with musicians, um, share my ideas, and if anybody's got something to like throw back at me, you know, I'd more than willing to listen. And just just so we can all get better at doing this stuff, because there's not a lot of a lot of people don't share their advice necessarily. I I've kind of found that like, you know, you can't just go up to like a promoter for like some big artist and say, hey, what are you doing right? You know, and it's like unless they have like a vested interest in your success, yes. many times they're not gonna they're not telling anything. You know, so. Kind of when you think about it, um, you know, as like indie artists, I guess, we're kind of on our own, you know, and it's, so it's like yeah. we might as well stick together, you know, and that's kind of what Music Goat is all about. I mean, I'm kind of learning on the on the, on the the run, but, uh, you know, but yeah, when I got ideas or stuff that I found that works or whatever, I try to try to post it on there and let everybody know about it. And then I open it up for other people like, like, like you even, if you wanted to do a guest post or a guest video or something like that. Um, you know, whatever. We'll just uh, throw it all at the wall and see what sticks. You know. <coughs> I will put up the link to Music Goat as well as the uh, the links to uh, to the other sites you've the, you've recommended along the way, particularly uh, in relation to a little bit about email marketing and marketing in general and the pay per click side. So, really appreciate your time, Corey. It was uh, it was great to speak to you. We've, we've exchanged often on. Um, on Twitter, but finally being able to have a chat has been uh, been great. Thanks for that. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. It's cool. It's always nice to talk about this stuff. I'll speak to you again soon. You take care. All right, you too. Cheers. Finishing with Nowhere to Go by the William Street Strikers, which is the introductory track to the Indie Music Tip series.